wireless hunting video game system or wireless gun TV game as it is also called was made by Shenzhen Qishen Long Industrialist in 2011. The company operates as Kit Station Toys in the United States of America. The system can be operated by 4 AA cells, but it also accepts 6 volts DC center negative from a barrel plug. It has a reset and a power button. An infrared source for the gun is in the front. The light source should be placed either on top or on the bottom of the TV. For convenience, a separate light source can be used instead. It is powered from a barrel plug socket from the back of the system and is attached to the screen by suction caps. Video output is done via composite video. The system communicates with the rifle wirelessly over 2.4G. The gun itself is powered with 4 AA cells which are fitted into a battery tray which resembles an actual magazine. On first glance, the gun looks cheap and flimsy, however all the buttons and the trigger work nicely and feel very decent upon playing. The gun has three buttons, a reset button which resets communication to the main system, a button to enter the menu and an action button, which is, as far as I can tell, not used in any of the included games. Other color schemes than black and orange exist. The gun has actual sights, but these are misplaced and therefore I have a hard time getting front and back sight in the focus of my eyes when playing. The system contains 20 games of varying quality. Avatar is a light gun homage to the 2009 film Avatar. Depending on the version of the plug and play system, this game is even called Avatar using the correct spelling. The player has to stop an invasion of humans. The game consists of 6 scrollable levels in which the player has to survive until a timer ends. After every level, the health is fully replenished. In the last level, hordes of soldiers will attack after the counter reached zero. And finally, a huge spaceship appears which has to be shot in order to win the game. In my opinion, this game is the most challenging action title on the system. It is therefore amongst my favorites for sure. Delta Force allows the player to select one of three characters. The five levels consists of a part where the player character is seen from the third person walking along a path and eventually stopping at some occasions. Enemies will then appear and attack. The second part of each level is a large scrollable stage in which enemies appear from cover. In these parts an alternative weapon and medikits can be picked up. Delta Force is one of the few games which uses the pump handle of the gun to reload. In my opinion, this game is easily one of the system's highlights and my personal favorite. Happy Darts is a match of darts against the CPU. The variant played is the one where the player has to decrease a certain amount of points down to zero by subtracting points scored on the dart board. Finally, the points have to reach precisely zero by hitting a double mark. Funny enough, this is not the only Dart Slide Gun game as there was a version of Bullseye for the ZX Spectrum released in the Sinclair Action Pack. Trophy Season, or Open Season as it is called in some other builds of the system, is a homage to the Big Buck Hunter series. In three levels, the player has to shoot male deer, birds and rabbits while avoiding shooting female deer. The gun has to be reloaded after every shot using the pump handle. Contrary to a big buck hunter game, far more than three bucks appear per level. The final score and the rating are displayed at the end. The graphics and animations of the game remind me of the Jack specific plug and play version of Big Buck Hunter Pro, yet they are not as good. Freedom Force consists solely of two levels in which objects have to be shot while avoiding an axe, which is eventually thrown towards the player by a cowboy. Shooting dynamite will cause the player to get snowblind for a few seconds. The used six-shot revolver can be reloaded once it is fully depleted by actuating the pump handle. Secret Mission consists of four levels in which a certain number of approaching enemies have to be shot. The player may enter a scope mode by actuating the pump handle, but this is somewhat pointless as the magnification is just very minor. 
The weapon loads automatically, but takes quite some time to do so. Predator is very similar to Secret Mission, but the gameplay is much worse in this game. The player scrolls the scenery with the reticle. Sadly, this mechanic feels hypersensitive and twitchy. Again, the player may enter a scope mode, but in this game the feature is broken and sets the view to the center of the scenery every time the mode is entered. Sometimes the game glitched out on me, which caused some of the textures to move together with the field of view, while the rest remained static. Health can be replenished by picking up medipacks. Angry Pirates consists of two levels which continue to loop in increased difficulty upon conclusion. One level takes place on open seas and lets the player shoot pirate boats. The other level plays at a pirate ship, where two kinds of pirates have to be shot, while shooting pirates who surrender will decrease the score. At the end of this level a boss will appear. He attacks the player with bare fists. In Balloon Shoot the player shoots balloons for points. Every now and then the speed of the balloons is changing. This game feels the most incomplete as there seems to be no real purpose or end to this game. In Be Careful, a girl is tied onto a turning wheel. In a knife throwing fashion, the player throws tomatoes at the plate while trying to avoid hitting the girl. Hitting the girl will take away points. Eventually a monster appears. If it is hit, it causes a time punishment. The scenery is alternating between day and night. In the night stages, now and then a black cat appears which can be shot for extra points. In Toyland the player has to make as many points as possible within a time limit. Different kinds of bonuses appear from time to time, such as score doublers and additional time. The game is very easy and it isn't difficult to achieve a score which violates the borders of the score box and the result table. Dream Forest is very similar to Toyland in every regard, however it is not as easy. Duck Hunt is a homage to the Nintendo game of the same name. It even borrows some of the sound effects. Visually the game reminds me somewhat of the first part of the Morhun series. In every round the player has to meet an increasingly difficult points requirement. Furthermore the amount of available ammunition is decreased as the game progresses. In Ghost Shooter the player has to surpass a points threshold within a time limit in order to carry on. The used gun is reloaded by pulling the trigger while the gun is empty. Amongst the enemies are two kinds which decrease the player's health if they attack. After 6 stages the game ends and it shows the final score on the rating. In Net Power the player tries to achieve as many points as possible within a time limit. In this game, the standard weapon is fully automatic. The game feels less complete than the others and lacks a score screen at the end. Super Archer lets the player shoot arrows at a target. The rent conditions are displayed in the lower right corner. These have to be considered in order to achieve a maximum of points. After 12 rounds, the final score is shown and compared against the high scores. Open Training features the same boy as Super Archer did, but this game is an airgun contest. The score of 30 rounds is summed up in a final score which is compared against a scoreboard. Penguin War lets the player protect items in the center of the screen from approaching penguins. The standard weapon is a slingshot, but other kinds of weapons can be picked up by shooting icons. If the player lasts 400 seconds, the game ends and the final score is shown. In my opinion, this is one of the better games. Ultimate Frisbee is a skeet shooting game. The number of clay pigeons and the difficulty increase as the game progresses. UFO shooting wants the player to make as many points as possible by shooting different kinds of enemies. The enemies just float by and do nothing. Overall I think this game is very boring and it felt incomplete to me. 
I am glad to own this system as these budget low fidelity items are often not considered collector's items and get extremely rare when time passes on. They often extinct or disappear from people's memories, so I am glad I was able to show it on my channel. That being said, this system is not much fun and honestly I can't recommend it to anybody. The system and all the contained games are technologically well made, but sadly the game design varies between average and poor. I play lots of early microcomputer light gun games. Often the premise of these games is not more complex than on the wireless system here. The difference however is that the challenge scoring system gameplay and game design make them far more fun to play. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben. I thank you for viewing.